Hello, I'm Bruce Janey, and today in Homemade Science, I want to see if I can lift my old station wagon just using this tarp and the pressure that can be exerted by this small shop vac. Airbags that are used to lift vehicles are usually smaller and use a much higher pressure. My idea is to make a very large bag out of that tarp, put it underneath the car, and then use a very low pressure to inflate it. I'm hoping that the bag can conform to the shape of the undercarriage and apply enough force to be able to lift it. The car weighs about 5,000 pounds or 2,268 kilograms. The undercarriage surface area is about 16,848 square inches or 10.9 square meters. So to lift the car, the shop vac has to be able to exert a pressure of about 0.3 pounds per square inch or 2 kilopascals. Shop vacs are actually made to move a large volume of air but not at a high pressure. If we measure the exhaust with the pressure gauge, it comes out to about 0.8 pounds per square inch. That's not a lot, but it should be enough according to our measurements. The tarp's dimensions are about 15 feet by 20 feet. After laying it out, the first thing I need to do is to seal all the grommets by using duct tape on both sides. The longer ends of the tarp were then brought together and I used extra wide duct tape to seal them. The two shorter edges at either end were then sealed the same way. Hopefully this seals it all the way around except for a small gap that I use for the air hose. It's finished. Let's give it a quick try. I'm going to use clamps to try and hold that hose in place a little bit better. Now let's give it some air. It took about three minutes to completely fill the bag. This will give you an idea of just how big it is. My first successful use of the bag was trying to lift 20 students as a demonstration of air pressure. <laughs> okay, this would be a lift of about 1,900 pounds. All right, now it's time to try it with the car. After backing the car up over the bag and spreading it out as evenly as I could, I attached the air hose and let's see what happens. We can see it lifting the back end of the car up. We give it a push. So the back end's up off the ground, but the front end is still supported by the tires. Not exactly what I wanted. I think part of the problem is that the car is on a downward slope and the heavier front end of the car is sitting lower than the back end. I also found some holes where the bag was punctured by some bolts in the undercarriage, so I had quite a bit of air leakage. I sealed up the holes with duct tape, now it's time to try it again. This section of the driveway is a bit more level. After spreading the bag out as evenly as I could, I then went underneath the car, located the sharp objects, and covered them with foam insulation. After attaching the clamps, it's time to give it another try. I can see that the car has moved up some, but it's just not getting it off the ground. It seems to be even worse than it was when the car was on a slant. Eventually I found the problem. The two clamps had popped off. Losing air. Is that going to hurt the car? It could. It said its famous last words. Let's fill it up with air again. Okay, I think we have this. Yep, look at that. Mary, come out and look at this. That's about 5,000 pounds off the ground. Hey, nice, it works. Is that all right? Yep, that's good.
we were able to lift this car with just a tarp and a small shop bag. All right, let's let it back down. Now the question is, what should I try and lift next? All right, now to deflate the bag a little bit quicker, I'm simply going to reverse the hose on the shop back, and instead of exhaling, we're now going to inhale. And well, there it is. Uh, I did have my doubts about this experiment. The math was there, but in some cases, theory versus practice don't always match up. But we were able to get this about four or five inches off the ground, and uh, I was really impressed with that. Anyway, I would like to thank you for stopping by and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.